Hey guys, what's up? So, on my back here, and I wanted to show you this little issue I'm having with my uh, drive shaft. It's like a little center bearing mount thing here. That's what it's called. But, uh, yeah, you can see the fibers is all worn out. Look at that. So, I already ordered a new one from Timken. I'll show you that in a couple of seconds, but gotta get this thing off of here. So, it's pretty, should be pretty basic. A couple straps here. Two bolts here and four at the transfer case. Sorry, there's a truck right there. Um, again, this truck is a 2006, so it's uh, over 10 years old. So I live in a corner. A lot of hot rods around here. Alright. Alright, get that going. All right, so I have this thing off, and uh, if you're wondering, I kind of paint my, all my underneath my truck, so that's why this thing is black and not rusted. So I'm gonna take that off. I think it's uh, the yoke off or the pinion. I can't remember what it's called. This thing's called, but um, get that off. Then I gotta pull this bearing thing off here, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, back. Um, man, it was a nightmare getting that bolt off. I had to heat it up, and uh, I think it's a 33. I have a 34 millimeter impact socket, but I think it's a 33 millimeter. Um, but actually I was lucky this thing just came off right here. The whole bearing mechanism came off. Whereas all the other videos on YouTube is a guy, people had to cut them off. So I do have, actually have a press. I was getting ready to press this stuff out. But I was going to have a challenge of getting the thing to fit in there. But um, yeah, I'm guessing this is factory, you know. This car is 192,000 miles. The truck is 192,000. It's Spicer, so... So, yeah, I was able just to pound that thing out. I fit and jack my threads up. I don't think I did. But, uh, yeah, that was a nightmare to get that nut off, man. Even my impact wrench, everything, you know. Yeah, I even had my vice. Nightmare. So, I don't know if I, you'd want to do that in the car now, because I feel like if you put that much pressure, you could jet, you could break the transfer case, maybe. Not sure. But, uh, you know, you could definitely do some harm, I think, the transfer case. You're putting hundreds of pounds of footprints or hundreds of pounds of torque on that thing so all right here's a replacement it's a timkin and uh, i made another rant video about this but uh made in china right there so yeah i did a whole rant series of things made in china paying premium prices for stuff that's made in china you know like they actually i could buy this thing for probably half price like the autozone brand or the Kragen or the o'reilly brand but, uh, yeah, it's all made in China now, man. They gotta... I'm actually kind of glad that Trump's putting tariffs on stuff, you know? Kind of force people to move, move production back to over here, so... All right, let's get this on. Let's see how this... All right. All right, get a wrapper. All right, so here's the Timken, and this is off the spice or the old one. The bearings don't look as good on this one. They look like cheaper bearings in the Timken. Um... Plus there's like this, there's like a, like a spacer bar here, which is welded on there. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to grind off the weld right there, you know. And I just need to enlarge around like this to get that on there. It's like that. Kind of powder it on there. I mean, it slid right on there. So I'm wondering if this actually was an aftermarket thing because the truck was kind of lifted when I got it in the back. So maybe they did this to correct the driveline angle. Not sure. That's stock or not, but it was definitely welded on there, so I had to grind it off. All right, this thing has been a total nightmare. It's a whole nother day. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the threads or what. I can't get this thing back on there. So this thing was a nightmare to get off, and it's can't even get it back on. It's almost like it wants to strip, but it's not. And actually, I went to Ford to see if I could get this thing, and they don't even sell it. They sell the whole dry shaft. They don't sell the individual nut. So like I said, you see those little three points right there? That's a crush nut. So, got a, a thread file. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe fix these threads a little bit or something, I don't know. I mean, they seem like they're perfectly fine, but you know, I don't know if, what the hell happened, but I can't get this thing on. So this is by far, everything has been easy except for this. So, yeah, and I had to buy a special sockets just for this thing because all my other sockets didn't fit it. So, so it's like a 33 millimeter for this thing. So, all right. All right, if you guys are wondering how this thing works, this thread file, so there's a different pitch on each of these things, the numbers. 
this actually happens to be, a, I think, a 7 8 dash 20. And you just go through and I and you just clean up the threads. I'm just bringing the threads down a little bit so I can get that nut on there. So before I couldn't even get this thing on, but now I, I can... This is a crush nut too, so you're not going to be able to get it on very much, but... Total nightmare nut, man. So now at least I'm spinning on before it felt like it was going to, you know, like strip it, cross thread it. So, so I think I'm on the right thread pattern now. I feel like I'm getting some threads, so I'm gonna do a little bit more, and then uh, yeah, because this thing actually, I had to get the, imp I had to heat this nut up with my torch and the impact just to get it off, and it impacted all the way through. It was tight all the way off. So, all right, all right, guys, got it back on. So if you don't have a good impact, don't even bother with this because you won't get this thing on or off. So I definitely need to have a good impact. So. All right, so got this thing back on. Trying to I'm gonna get it mounted again, so it's just gonna be a matter of bolting it up. So I'll show you when I'm done. All right, guys, there it is. I just painted everything, so it's kind of wet, but there's no more play in there. So I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but one of the reasons why I did this or noticed or thought about it was uh, um, I was actually getting a clunk when I was going over over uh, over like uh, dips and, and bumps. Not dips, but uh, speed bumps and like parking lots and stuff. Yeah, I'd hear like a clunk back here, and this thing I think was moving up and down and pounding. So, all right, hopefully it solves that problem. But regardless, it needed it anyways. It was you don't want this thing to get out of all this vibration in here. So, yeah, and that spacer bar was actually an aftermarket thing. That is for uh, to lower this to keep the geometry correct for the lift I have on this thing. So. Alright guys, hopefully this helps somebody.